Hello. Um, I just want to say sorry for not making a video for like nine or ten months. It's been a long time. I've been meaning to like post and I've had so many people messaging me um, just to give an update really of how I'm doing. Um, I'm still unwell. Um, more unwell than, than I want to be. Well, I want to make a full recovery. That's where I'm aiming for. But yeah. It's been a ride. The last nine, ten months have been mad. Um, in their own way, I mean, life is pretty hectic for everyone. But yeah, um, just quickly, uh, I am in a new flat. Um, I managed to move out of my parents' house. This video might be a bit of a long one, so if you just want to listen to it in chunks, then that's fine. If you're noise sensitive, like I sometimes am, then feel free to turn the screen away. Uh, if you're EMF sensitive, um, but yeah, I haven't made an update since the end of last summer. Uh, it was probably the first time in my recovery. I've been ill pretty much bang on three years now. I got ill in 2018 and now it's 2021. The end of last summer, sort of early autumn, winter time was when I last posted a video and I was like having a lot of fun, like just letting go, like easing up on recovery. I was, before that I was quite diligent in my recovery and strict. And I found that just wasn't working for me and I need to just let go and try and just chill and have more like enjoyment in my life really um but yeah through like the autumn i basically just hibernated um chilled out um but i don't know if anyone else here finds that if you're suffering from me it's always worse in the winter i don't know if it's something to do with the light or the vitamin d levels or the heat or whatever our natural rhythm i find mine like really so the postman's just turned up so yeah, like my energy was just lower for the whole of last winter and I actually went back to being mostly bed bound again. Not like fully bed bound, I could get up and make like a little bit of food here and there, but most of the time I was just like laying down. Um, but yeah, I still was better than the winter before. I was like going on like a drive or two each week, uh, making a couple of meals here and there and doing all my breakfasts. See, I found just like through last winter, I just wasn't really making much progress. It was just like I was hitting this brick wall and just not getting anywhere. And it was like so frustrating. Um, I basically have had this like ongoing gallbladder inflammation. Uh, they have, no one's really diagnosed it. Um, but what I'm coming, what I'm pinpointing it as is I think it's like a pathogen or something because every time I eat like a raw garlic, uh, which is an antimicrobial, it kind of goes down. Um, but yeah, I had that, it just kind of comes and goes. Some nights I can't sleep on my right side, but I can kind of manage it really. Um, also like, I don't know whether it's just being like a guy, like a bloke, but for me, I like to be like a provider. That's a lot in my mind and it's something I'm working at. Um, and basically I'm quite financially driven. Um, and I think part of why I became unwell and like stress and stuff was I got unwell after going to university and I ended up um, having this huge student loan. And I don't know if it's different in any, any other parts of the world like America, but in the UK here, I came out with this huge loan and I felt like university wasn't really worth it. Like if I had the option to go again, I wouldn't go. And um, yeah, basically I just kept getting these letters through being like, you owe 21,000 pounds worth of debt. Um, back and here it gets wiped after 30 years but for me it just feels really unfair that I'm not able to work because I'm unwell and this loan is just gaining interest and then there's nothing that's going to be done about it, it just it goes up and up and up and up because I'm just not working I'm not able to pay this thing down yeah I've always just wanted to be financially independent and I decided like I'm laying in bed each day feeling really unwell everyone else who's been to uni can go and pay theirs off because they've got a job and I like can't so yeah basically i rang up the student loans company and i said can you like pause the interest please because i'm unwell and they said sorry we can't um so i did a, basically did a load of research and i found out that i can actually apply to get my student loan written off but we found one gp well he wasn't a gp he's like a specialist cfs doctor and he said yeah sure i'll sign it basically yeah i i went to him and he he could see the situation i was in that you know the student loans company are charging me loads of interest and nothing was being done about it. So yeah, he signed it and it took ages. Like I had to send all these forms off and stuff and I had to wait for them for ages, like six weeks. Um, and basically came back to me and um, yeah, <laughs> I got my student loan written off. So 
That was the first positive thing that happened. That was back in February this year. And then, yeah, and then I basically ended up um, last, the end of last summer, um, issues in my parents' house have been like really stressful. And I just realized like I had so many people telling me like, Jack, you need to get out of your parents' house because there's just constant arguing, constant moods. You don't want to be around people's energy all the time. Like, I, I need my own space. Um, and I was just constantly in my room at home with my dad around. Just, I felt really on edge all the time. I never felt relaxed, even though their house is quite big. Um, and there's a garden there, I just didn't feel relaxed. Yeah, there was a massive argument uh, two years ago and I basically applied to get onto the housing register. Um, it's basically through the council. Uh, so basically the government owns certain properties um, and they're called council properties. And um, there's also housing associations as well. So like big organizations that own properties and they put people in need in these properties. I did actually get offered a council flat um, back last September. I was really excited and then I went to view it and there was just this blasting music, like, um, and it was this really rough, like council estate. I'll play the video of it. <laughs> visit it in the morning at like 11 o'clock in the morning and there's this blasting music above the flat that I would have been renting and then I went back at like two o'clock in the afternoon and it was still blasting out it was just this same like horrendous beating noise and then I went back in the evening and it was still the same track was just blaring out and then I went back at 11 30 at night with my mum and it was still there and I was just like this is a no I'd rather just stay living with my parents at the time I didn't actually post that in my last update but I just realized I couldn't, I couldn't have lived there. You might ask me like, why, why would you want to go on the council register? But basically once I, I pushed really to get on it and it's really hard to get on. Basically the reason is, is because you don't actually have a landlord. The ha landlord is the council or the housing association. And once you get offered a property, you don't have to worry about getting kicked out or anything. Uh, so you don't have to deal with like landlords wanting to boot you out and stuff. Like once you've got that flat, it's yours. And if the council needs to, to get out and they'll move you somewhere else, they'll find you a replacement. But the only issue is, is it's often like, it's usually for people who are kind of, haven't got that much, you know, people who are homeless, people who have drug problems, people who come out of prison, or people with health issues. They'll basically put people like that in these properties. Um, and yeah, so long story short, I, I turned that one down. Um, and basically, but then in February, I got offered this really beautiful flat which is this one um, and I was like oh my god I was so excited about it yeah I bid for it around new year time and then got offered it in February viewed it in February accepted it straight away um, I was so happy about it I met the neighbor upstairs and she's got fibromyalgia and she's really lovely um, and literally the view is amazing it's right next to the river it's opposite a nature reserve it's in a really quiet neighborhood and it's through it is through the council, but it's through like a housing association. Um, and it's not in like a dodgy neighborhood, which is really great. Um, so I obviously, I was like so over the moon. It's like an eight minute drive from my parents. And originally I was planning on just using it like a few times a week and building up, but I ended up coming here every day and I built up to doing two drives each day. Um, Cause I do go back to my parents as well. Cause they still look after me a bit and do my lunches and dinners still sometimes. Although I'm doing more lunches myself. So yeah, like after getting off that horrendous flat to getting off of this one, I was like, oh my God, this is like amazing. Like it felt, honestly, it felt like the best day of my life. Like even though I was unwell, the neighbor downstairs had moved out and I'd met him just before he moved out when I viewed it. Uh, so the downstairs flat had been empty. And then um, really, really bad, this really, obnoxious neighbor moved in downstairs 
who my dad actually knew and he had been blasting really loud music late at night. Basically the first night he moved in it was just blaring out, like I could hear it all through the floor. It's just like, this is not happening. Um, and that was in March. And basically this went on every night, like I confronted him um, politely and just said, hey man, can you like just keep it down because I've got an illness? And he was like, yeah, sure. And then like he just kept doing it. And basically like he hasn't put a carpet in, so it's all like echoey in his apartment and stuff. Um, and I was just thinking like, oh, I might just move and stuff. And I had loads of friends being like, why should you move? Like he needs to move. I literally tried sorting things amicably. So yeah, he asked for my like email address and I gave it to him and he emailed me a few times and I like really randomly and I had to email him back being like, yo, your music's too loud, can you turn it down? And he got really shirty with me and then he was all right and then he was really grumpy and really rude. Um, I'll put up examples of like what he sent to me and stuff, like really like obnoxious. But basically, yeah, I ended up like, he ended up being really rude to me and telling me, you know, go away. And if you have a problem with it, you need to go to the housing association. Um, so I did, I made it like an official complaint. I spent honestly like weeks making this huge document, a complaint of like all the times, the dates, like when he played like loud music. Um, and it was just like me versus him and it was horrendous. Um, and then he started um, posting really rude notes through my door as well. Um, he shouted at my mom. He, he, he called my mom the C word. Like he then got he kept he's got a drink problem and probably maybe an out uh, and maybe a drug problem as well, but he went out and um, outside he like shouts up at me and called me the c word and he accused me of stealing his Wi-Fi. I had to ring the police and get the police involved. Just like everything you don't need when you've got me was happening to me. Um, but basically since then, like he's pissed off like the lady upstairs. She feels really vulnerable around him. He's then annoyed multiple other tenants in the neighborhood. And a lady came and knocked on my door and said, um, hey, we're actually gonna back you to get rid of this guy. Um, and we're, I'm basically right now in like massive complaint because my housing association has done nothing. And yeah, I've like, I'm so thankful to one of my best friends who's been really helping me with all the paperwork and stuff. And I'm just trying all I can to get rid of him because this flat is so beautiful and I don't wanna lose it. Basically, I'll put some videos and stuff over this of like what my flat is like. Um, but it's just gutting because it's right in the evening when I try to sleep and I'm, everyone knows how important early nights are for recovery. So that's gone on for literally six months and I'm at the point now where if I can't get rid of them, I'm going to have to move out, but I don't want it to get to that point. But yeah, I'm so thankful to my friend who legit has been helping me so much. He's like helped me write all the emails to the housing association. Um, and literally the other day, they've just admitted that they should have done more a um, month ago. So yeah, like, I don't know how long to put, stick up with this for. I mean, I've had advice from people who have been ill and have fully recovered and said, you've got a really nice flat, stick with it. I've had other people say, get out of there and go find somewhere else to live. Um, but yeah, but all the stuff he's been doing, like he's been slamming his door really loudly because one of the other neighbors complained to him for slamming his door. So he started doing it more, just trying to get a reaction out of everyone. Earplugs. But yeah, I'm having to get like environmental health involved now and get them to like come over with decibel level meters and stuff and recording equipment. And but the thing is, it's like a fine line of is it too loud or is it not too loud? And yeah, but basically, me and all the other neighbors, we're gonna try and like put together this big complaint and just say we want this guy moving somewhere else because it's really affecting my health and other people's health so 
It's just like whether his noise is enough for eviction, but I think this is more than eviction now because he's like sworn at people, he's slammed his door, he's making people feel really uncomfortable. He had like a massive bust up with a guy across the road, like they were so close to having a fight. Like this, um, this other guy across the road nearly smashed his window because he wound him up so much. Like he's just been pissing the whole neighborhood off. So part of me thinks I'm just gonna stick with this complaint, follow it through. You know, in my head, I'm telling myself I'm gonna wait until like the new year. Then it would have been like a whole year, and if nothing's happened, then I will have to leave. But I should really hope I don't because this place is so therapeutic and so quiet and just perfect for what I need. So yeah, and I don't really want to move like really far away from where I live now because like all my friends are here and stuff and it's just, yeah. And yeah, and on the topic of friends as well, I actually lost one of my best friends earlier in the year, um, right at the beginning of the year actually. Um, it affects me quite a lot, like it's kind of past now, but I won't go into details, but yeah, lost one of my best friends at the beginning of the year. Um, and now I'm losing another best friend because he's going traveling. And yeah, it's just been like so much shit thrown at me. I'm just like dodging it all, but you know, I'm still here. I'm still fucking fighting. So, so yeah, like with all that going on, because I've had really bad gut issues like over two years now. Basically the story was I started working back in 2019 with this functional medicine practitioner, like a nutritionist. And she told me, oh, you need to be taking antimicrobials, which I was doing. And basically she forced me to take these antimicrobials out of no fault of her own. She wasn't her fault, but I was just taking these things that I, at the time I wasn't tolerating, but I pushed my body anyway. Basically I ended up with diarrhea every day. It caused IBSD and I, it just didn't stop. No matter what I took or tried, like it just did not stop. And basically I spoke to this doctor and she said, I'll work with you, but I want you to do an endoscopy and colonoscopy. So basically having a camera put down my throat and up the other end. So I went up to London, um, and had an endoscopy. I had to fast for like two days almost. I didn't eat any food, it was really hard. Went up to London and it's basically like an operation. They put you on the sedation. So they, they put a needle in your arm and then they sedate you. So you get, you basically gives you amnesia so you can't remember anything. And it was a lot like to go through with the illness, the fatigue, the brain fog, all the symptoms and then being sedated and then having a camera shoved down your throat. Like all I can remember is like dry heaving. And like I had to lay down while this woman had this, like it's quite a thick tube and they put it down, they ask you to swallow it right down your throat. Because the amnesia, they luckily don't really remember much. Yeah, but they said they didn't find anything. They took biopsies on the colonoscopy, which all came back normal as usual. Basically another treatment that I'd tried was um, by this doctor who had ME and she fully recovered. And she, she's called Dr. Dr. Claire Bowen. And she was really unwell for about 10 years. One of the main parts of her recovery was this um, treatment called activated oxygen uh, or singlet oxygen therapy. And I've got this machine and we, we basically rented to buy it. So we rent, it was like a loan over 18 months. And now we own the machine and it's called Air Energy. And basically you just hook up this cannula, probably not gonna explain this very well, but it pulls um, just oxygen air around us through this filter into the machine and then it filters it through um, past and spectrum of LED light and through water and it um, basically turns that oxygen into activated oxygen and there's a tiny chemical reaction it gives off a tiny bit of energy and you can breathe it in and it sounds kind of quackery um, but you can look it up for yourself I'll leave the links down in the description so yeah I was like trying most people can build up a few minutes every few days or a minute every few days um, basically, I, again, been super freaking sensitive to every treatment that I've done so far. I couldn't do one minute every day. I just overwhelmed me and I ended up crashing. So I could tolerate one, one day on, one day off. I tried to build up to two minutes and crashed. I couldn't do it. So I tried building 10 seconds every like five days and that didn't work. So I did 10 seconds every week and that didn't work. And I did 10 seconds every 10 days, just adding 10 seconds on every 10 days and that didn't work. So I was like, oh fuck. So then I tried adding five seconds every 10 days and I could just about tolerate that. Um, so basically I've been building up since May around the time I had the endoscopy. Yeah, I've been building up five seconds every 10 days and every time I build up and add another five seconds, it kind of made my body be like, whew. Can kind of feel that um 
but yeah, and I was doing one day on one day off, one day on one day off, and then um, yeah, every ten days I'd add another five seconds. Um, but basically, I found the one day on one day off too much. So basically, um, I spoke to Dr. Claire, and she said add another rest day so you do one day on two days obviously doing it every three days um and i really didn't want to do that because like it's not going to be as effective but i did and literally within a few weeks i just noticed that my gut was really like so much better um and basically my diarrhea has pretty much gone which is amazing like if you suffer with sorry for talking about like it's probably too much information for everyone but if you suffer from like ibsd for two years it's just crippling you lose electrolytes you get dehydrated you constantly run to the loo you can't go out anywhere it just sucks and i asked her like look why i haven't been doing any other treatments i've had this issue with my gut for like two years and then i do this and within the space of a few weeks it goes why and she was she thinks because the activated oxygen actually detoxifies at a cellular level and actually within my gut there's no like infection there or anything it's just detoxification my body is get trying to get rid of stuff dredging stuff out and that is why the activated oxygen is so powerful because it it enhances that detoxification so yeah uh if anyone's suffering from ibsd every single day relentlessly try activated oxygen work on your detox pathways and elimination so that happened which is like the first best thing that's happened this year really apart from getting the flat originally but yeah it's been really slow really tedious and i'm now at two minutes and 15 seconds um every three days and i'm still adding every 10 days the five seconds on so basically building about 15 seconds a month but yeah it also engages the parasympathetic nervous system so it calms everything down so if i'm feeling quite tired but pushing through i'll do it and it makes me like chill like it literally relaxes everything it's like getting a massage you're like ah, oh, that's good i'm actually gonna go rest now and relax properly whereas if you're feeling like bit groggy but kind of want to do something you've been kind of resting quite a lot you do it it'll give you like a zing and you're like whew, ready to go ans rewire yeah people message me being like should i do ans rewire what's your opinions on it i think it's an amazing program really i think anyone should do it with any illness even um not just me but if you're suffering from me i think go and do a program like that because it's the base it's the fundamentals of like you and getting your nervous system to calm right down for me, I actually really struggled to watch the videos um, and so much stuff happened. I think I've just been so unwell. I can't even comprehend it myself how unwell I've been. Moving out, I just couldn't really like focus on anything when I was moving out and getting all the stuff for my flat. Then like with the whole noise complaint stuff, do I move somewhere else looking for another property? Do I move out to my parents? Do I stay here? Do I tolerate it? You know, like all these things have just been like festering up and then like, trying to cook, look after myself and cook food for myself and stuff it's just been like a lot and i feel like i didn't really commit commit to the program not out of my fault of my own but i just couldn't physically get through the videos and do everything that was being asked to do when i had all this other like external stuff going on and i do want to restart the program again it took me over like two years and i kind of got I was about five videos from the end or six videos from the end so i wasn't far away but i didn't actually finish the program properly so yeah i can't really tell anyone like what my opinion is of it fully because i haven't i never actually finished it so i hope that answers people's questions as soon as this noise thing's done and things settle down i plan to get back on with it again in the minutes while well, i'm just trying to get to the point where i can actually cook and look after myself and make food for myself i did buy two fridges like two fridge freezers and yeah the woman upstairs laughed at me and said like what <laughs> why have you got two fridge freezers and basically the reason is so one is like for my food and the second one is for like batch cooking and meal prep and freezing and you know just to help myself like be able to look after myself a bit more but yeah currently now i'm able to make all my breakfasts most of my lunches i'm still being cooked my dinners by my parents i'm doing two drives a day now i've been going in the sea uh, one of my friends helped me find a wetsuit and i've got a big thick seven mil wetsuit so even in the winter i've been going in been running down to the sea i live um, not far from Brighton so I've been jumping in the sea there um, I've been meeting up with friends I've been like you know making food for myself and then going out with friends um, just loads of stuff um, I bought a car um, it's like a Citroen Berlingo like a big it's like a boxy van car already um, and I actually put a bed in the back of it I got a free double bed off marketplace 
um, and I did loads of woodwork and sawed that to size and then I got a free memory foam mattress as well um, so I put that in the back and I just had quite a lot of fun making that and it's just kind of been like my safe space outside of this flat and like my parents it's like another kind of place to go and be able to just drive somewhere and like lay down and chill out and relax and stuff so that's been really nice um, and then yeah I've been also going like and doing quite a lot of uh, not like necessarily kayaking um, but just sitting in a kayak and like drifting down the river and I can like paddle a bit and I actually kayaked about six miles um, I mean the water was drifting really slowly but um, it kind of blew me away how far I actually managed to get um, and I did that with one of my friends and then yeah as well I'm also planning on working with a doctor soon um, there's a new doctor I found, he's like a CFS doctor, he's written quite a few books on CFS, uh, he's helped a lot of people with ME, um, so yeah, there's a lot of stuff moving and changing, uh, by the time I post on the video, this guy will either be booted the frick out of here, or I would have moved somewhere else. Other than that, life's not bad, you know, it's, it's tough most days, you know, it's just a slog, I feel like I'm climbing Mount Everest every day, just getting through each day, but it just hit me like how hard every day has been, like the last three years. Um, and then with COVID, I haven't actually had the vaccine, um, I decided not to get it. I've had some people who've had ME who have been fine taking it, other people haven't been well at all and it's made them crash and they've never recovered from it, so for me, I've got like my own accommodation now, I don't really see anyone else really. Um, so I just thought I'd, you know, not get it and just see what happens. But yeah, that's pretty much it really. Um, this year has just been a bit of a whirlwind of crap throwing itself at me. Not like really, really bad stuff, but just stuff that's kind of been preventing me, I feel like, from moving forwards really and being like in a completely calm state. Not like, I don't really need to be in like a completely calm state all the time, but just, you know, that baseline of just feeling relaxed, having somewhere to go where you can go to sleep at night and yeah it's just those small things become huge things if you don't get them sorted so that's kind of i hope like this video my tone hasn't been too like weighted down but it's been kind of a lot to talk about because it has been a lot um but yeah anyway i hope you guys enjoyed the video sorry if it's like a long one but yeah i'm gonna try and post another video by like sort of maybe the kind of end of the winter time just to keep things steady and let you guys know how I'm getting on, you know, like the noise and stuff. I mean, I've done everything I can of wearing earplugs and things like that. But yeah, it's just been a madness really. And um, yeah, just trying to get things sorted really. Yeah, but anyway, I'm going to leave you guys to it now. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you guys soon.